Welcome to the Center for Career and Calling, where we bring you information, resources, and food for thought on vocational discernment and professional formation. Hello, thank you for joining me again. Um, this is uh, another part of the Backpack to Career series um, for the Career Center. My name is Nancy Burford, and I'm the Work Integrated Learning Coordinator at the King's University. Who I have with me today is, uh, is I have Claire Schneider. Welcome. Hi, thank you. And uh, Claire is an, an HR professional, and uh, she comes with lots of, uh, lots of advice and, uh, and suggestions for new hires. Um, and we, we're just going to begin right away with uh, the hiring process. So we have students at King's that are going to be graduating this year. Some are going to be doing uh, summer jobs. So we also have that element. And then we have uh, some that are launching into careers or uh, revisiting, um, like alumni revisiting how to enter the career force and, uh, and just looking for some advice. So, uh, so we'll just begin, Claire. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate that. Thanks for having me. Okay, so how about we just start with uh, just sort of how to prepare for an interview and then we'll work into like what an interview looks like. So, so what pointers could you give students and alumni, new grads, um, how to best prepare for an interview? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so when preparing for an interview, uh, it's always important to um, have read and reread the job posting. Uh, you can also reach out to the recruiter or the hiring manager and request the job description. Uh, so that'll give you a little more insight into uh, what they're looking for, the details of the job. Um, it's important to, uh, to visit the website of the organization. Right. Uh, maybe see if you can pull an organization chart, uh, just become familiar with, with what they do. Um, often you can find articles on there. Um, just a lot of uh, preparing yourself for, for questions that they might ask you. And um, it's also important to have your, your resume with you. And although it is your resume and you're probably familiar with it, uh, it's good to have it uh, alongside of you. If you are doing a Zoom interview, you know, have it at your side. If you're doing an in-person interview, maybe bring a, a couple of copies for the panel. Uh, it just makes you look more prepared. And it's easier to, um, I guess, pull out those examples uh, during the interview when you have your, your work experience close at hand. So um, a few tips. Okay, um, I'm just wondering, you know, when you go on the web page and you look down, like um, basically a bit of a history, you know, of, of what the company has done so far and, and maybe some projects that they might be hiring you to assist with, but also the mm -hmm. values and mission statement. Do you feel like that has, is that kind of an, um, that a, a person should really understand values and mission statements of a company? Yes, absolutely. I forgot to mention that. So yeah, the mission, the vision, uh, the core values, often those um, are, are asked uh, in some way or another in the interview questions. So it's good to be familiar with those. If they aren't asked, you can always throw those into an answer. Um, and then it shows that you've really done your homework. And the interviewers want to see that your values align with the values of the organization. Right. So it's really good to be familiar with those. Yeah. Right. So even think through how your values, if you've not written it in the cover letter, maybe that's why you've been brought into the interview because you understand that, but be able to explain how your values cross over or complement the values of, of the company. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So um, what style of questions do you prefer? Uh, so when I'm interviewing, I prefer the behavioral style interview question. Uh, so that's when you are given a question saying, um, tell us about a time, or um, I guess, um, can you think of a past example when this happened? How did you respond? What was the result? Uh, there are often three or four part questions. 
Um, so the interviewers are generally very good with, uh, with repeating them, but it's also um, definitely okay to bring a pad of paper and a pen with you to the interview, uh, take some notes and make sure that you, uh, make sure that you understand the different parts of the question and that you don't miss anything. So um, yeah, I like the behavioral style. Uh, it shows that um, the interviewee can draw on a past experience and explain um, you know, their role in the situation, what they did uh, and the result. So there's also a technique called the STAR technique Right. And when you're answering the question, um, the acronym STAR stands for situation, task, action, and result. Right. So that just ensures it's good to have that in the back of your mind or even written on a piece of paper. Um, it ensures that you're, I guess, uh, answering the question thoroughly right. and explaining what you did, um, the challenges you faced, how you overcame those, and then the result of of your actions in the situation. So, um, and try to use a positive, a positive example. So, yeah. And, and as you're saying that about behavioral questions, I know some students are worried about that because they don't know what that question is going to be. So yeah. like I've often said, you know, it relates to the job somehow it will relate to something you're either going to have to deal with, with the job or, something that they're hoping that you intuitively know and are able to explain. So do you have sort of a motivation behind what type of behavioral question you ask? Mm -hmm. So ultimately, um, interviewers, I guess, are not looking for uh, the best example. They're looking for um, how you would react in that situation, right? So um, let's say, uh, you're interviewing for um, an entry level um, human resources assistant position, for example. And so the question might be, um, tell us about a time when you encountered a difficult client uh, or a difficult, a difficult customer at reception. Um, how did you how did you handle it? What did you say? What was the result? Whatever. Um, and so if you haven't, I guess, had that particular experience to draw upon, um, instead of saying, uh, you know, no, this has never happened to me, or I'm going to pass on this question, uh, just be honest and say, uh, you know, I haven't encountered this, but if I did, right. uh, if this were to happen to me, and then explain how you would um, how you would handle it, right? So again, they're not looking for the best example per se. They're looking for how you would approach the situation. So it's like your process, like how you yeah, the process, yeah, your your thought process and and how you would I guess just go about handling it. Okay, thanks. Um, what kind of notes? So I know the way that you would take notes through an interview would be different than answering questions. Did they answer it well, rated one to five, you know? So I know that everybody might have their own system. What kind of system do you use while you're writing notes to give yourself clues to whether that candidate is qualified or not? Yeah, so um, I usually, as the uh, HR representative on the panel, I usually am the one to take notes and I try to keep them, um, I guess, as specific as I can while um, taking as much detail as I can down. And I usually ask the hiring manager or the supervisor or whoever is on the panel with me if they want to take notes as well or if they just want to listen because sometimes it's tough to listen and take notes. Right. So. My role is often the note taker. Um, and as for scoring, uh, I, I guess I make notes of, um, you know, is the candidate staying on track? Did they answer the question? Um, what else? Uh, what was their role? If it's a team example, um, you know, what was their contribution? Um, and then looking for that, I guess that end result to to kind of 
um, tie things all together at the end. So we don't typically do rating as we go. We do it at the end. Um, and it's often based on uh, a number of factors that are determined prior to the interview. So um, did they, did they um, cover these specific points? Uh, is it related to the position at hand? Did it draw on their own experience or their own education? Um, and ultimately, I guess, did they answer the question? Right. So, so the question or the, the way that you note take isn't like you said, scoring, because often that's how, what it feels like, I think, too. It makes a, it make, makes a candidate kind of nervous because they feel yeah. like they're being marked, you know? Yeah. But, but the types of questions that are asked and how you respond to it is really the notation of, you know, like whether they were able to stay on task with the question. And if not, still, were they able to answer what you needed to know? Basically, you're trying to draw, draw out information and answers to whether they're, they are good candidates. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then at the end of the interview or at the end of the day, after meeting with four or five, six people, then we have uh, those examples written down in point form to draw upon um, and, and we typically score everybody together. Right, so it's not after one interview. However, one, one person might wow you, which is now the next question. So what would wow you in an interview? So it would be like what parts of the answers or what like that would be an obvious connection to a good candidate for a job? Mm -hmm. um, I would say that uh, some wow factors could be, um, I guess, really relating uh, the examples that you use, whether it's from past work experience or from your education, school projects, to the role that you're applying for, that you're being interviewed for. Um, again, using specific examples, being concise. Um, so when the interview is, or when the interviewer is taking notes, um, it's easy for, for them to make that connection between the question that they've asked you and what your response is. Um, so being concise is important. Um, so you've done your research, obviously, and using, uh, using those or those findings, I guess, in your answers, in your responses. Um, that's great. Uh, asking one, two, maybe three questions tops at the end of the interview right. um, that shows that you've done your research and that you are interested in the organization and uh, that you've done, you know, some, some pre-work. Um, mention that you, obtained the job description or obtained the org chart, ask a few questions about that. Um, what else could be a wow factor? Uh, presenting yourself well, right? Making eye contact, um, being confident. And sure. it's also important to note that um, interviewers don't uh, score or rate on whether or not you're nervous. That's completely normal. So if you are nervous, you know, don't worry about it. Just just do the best you Honestly, can and will answer questions. Yes, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Okay. They're just listening to to the responses, right? Unless and, perhaps it's a job that you have to do a lot of presentations for. Yeah, good point. Right. Yeah. So if you're doing a lot of public engagement, community engagement, or presentations and those sort of things, then obviously that would be something you're looking for. You're looking for someone who's confident, can present, can speak off the cuff, who who does really well with uh, with the interview. You know, yeah. so it'd be a different type of job. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So then, in the opposite to that, um, what would be a negative distraction? Uh, that would put them, you know, that would, um, it's not like it would disqualify them, but something where you'd say, oh, I wish they wouldn't have done that or, you know. Yeah. Um, so there's a few things, I guess. Uh, first of all, I think it depends on um, whether or not your interview is virtual or in person. So if you're doing a virtual interview, um, which is very common these days, 
Yes. Uh, make sure that you have a tidy background or you put your background on blur. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, in the library. <laughs> yeah. Just because you're not in person, you know, still get dressed. Um, you know, look the part. Uh, you know, um, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought here. <laughs> right. Well, that, that would be like in person or Zoom or like a virtual yes. for sure. Yeah. So put your best foot forward. It's always better in an interview to be overdressed than underdressed, right? This yes. is, um, I always think the best 45 minutes or an hour that they're going to see of that candidate, right? So put your best foot forward. Um, definitely don't use your phone during an interview. So uh, have it off, you know, make sure it's on silent. Um, don't take that phone call, uh, maybe leave it in another room so you're not distracted by it. Uh, don't chew gum, you know, a glass of water is definitely okay. Um, I don't know, I wouldn't be drinking anything else that could be distracting like a smoothie or coffee or anything like that. Um, Hmm. What about like um, chewing gum or if you have a nervous habit, I, I think some of it is like, you can't help it. You're going to be nervous if that's the way you are too in those situations, yeah. but to be self-aware of things you might do that, that you don't know when you're nervous, like to be self-aware then like some people are, you know, they, they shake they're like shaking their leg or they're like, you know, out of nervousness, like to be so to be yes. self-aware of certain things you do when you're nervous and try to deal with that um, yeah. practice beforehand. So it's not a distraction. Yeah, that's a good point too. Um, maybe record yourself or practice in the mirror, right? And if you know that you have um, a nervous habit of some kind, then just try to um, try to set that aside, try to relax. As for chewing gum and food, uh, definitely not. You know, the interview is going to be probably only between 30 minutes and one hour. So um, you shouldn't really need to have any, any gum or Ice. snacks. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, as you need. <laughs> So I, right. I was also thinking about this as my dog is uh, wanting to go out and I can hear in the background and I think, okay, so the virtual call, this is a big deal with the virtual interview to make sure all of those background noises are dealt with, kennel the dog, you know, tell everybody I'm on an interview, don't come walking behind me and ask me for something or where did I put the... So these yeah. are new things, right? Like it, it, that was never yeah. the case before we have an interview, you're in person, it's just you and them. But now mm -hmm. it's like your home, your, your casual life, your personal life is yeah. behind you. Like if you have children at home or dogs or pets, yeah. whatever. So during the interview, have you, ever, have you experienced that so far with uh, virtual interviews? Yeah, um, I have. And I think it's important, like you said, to maybe uh, prearrange for childcare uh, or pet care or take your dog for a long walk before the interview, give him or her a treat, um, just so they're not distracting you or the panel, right? Yeah. Another, yeah. another thing I wanted to mention too is definitely test your technology before. Right, yeah. Um, because you need to be able to, uh, to be on screen. The panel needs to see your face. Um, often interviews require short presentations, uh, a couple of PowerPoint slides. Um, so be familiar with uh, the ability to share your screen. Uh, make sure that your your technology is working. Right. Mic, camera, etc. So. Right, and lighting. Lighting seems to be a big thing yeah. for Zoom. So. Um, I know I've, I've worked with students on Zoom and sometimes their faces are in the dark because of the way the lighting is in the room. And it doesn't matter so much when you're talking to your friends or talking to family or whatever, but on mm -hmm. an interview, you need to make sure the lighting is at least get a, a laptop, like a desktop light or something to shine on your face in a yes. way so that they can see you. And so because um, Zoom's just like a camera of any kind, it picks up on the light backgrounds and takes the focus out of the foreground or whatever. It'll just do its own adjustment. Yeah, that's a great point. So maybe move your laptop closer to a window or get one of those selfie lights just to brighten up your face a little bit. 
Right. So it's all about being intentional, um, yes. preparing for the interview, whether it's in person or a virtual interview. So really, um, like this kind of discussion, I think is helpful because if a student has never gone to an interview, they've never even thought through, like, what does it look like? And then thinking about it being virtual, which is so common now, and it's it's easier, like for HR managers too, like it's kind of, an, it provides an easier access to, you know, five candidates instead of, you know, having to have them come in. Yeah. So maybe that's a good question too. How many, how many sort of candidates do you bring it down to? What's typical? Is it down to three? Like you have an application, maybe you have 50 applicants. How you pare it down to, what would be the number that you'd pare it down to? Yeah, so uh, for one position, uh, typically um, the organization would interview probably five to six candidates. Uh, what's really popular now is phone screens. Um, so before the interview, so, um, and these aren't always scheduled. It might just be, you know, pick up the phone, call you, uh, why are you interested in this position? Uh, what do you know about our organization? So even at the point of application, um, okay. make sure you okay. know a little bit about uh, the role, why you're interested in it, what caught your eye, right. and maybe some, some facts about the organization. So a phone screen with probably, I don't know, maybe eight people. Uh, first interview, typically five, six people for one position. Um, and then there would likely be a second interview, maybe with an additional uh, person on the panel or a different panel altogether with one consistent panel member. Um, and then the second interview would probably be no more than two. Right. So then you're competing. It's, it's tight. Yeah. Um, yeah. And not always like for, for entry level or summer jobs. Um, I've no, I don't know if I've ever heard of a second interview for those type of jobs. So like the really competitive jobs where you have, you know, a lot of experience and the wage is higher. And so, and the job quality is, you know, more specific. So those type of jobs would have a different approach as well, I would think, because, competition is it's a different type of competition yeah and there's probably a lot of applicants depending on the job that you're applying for right and do you ever use the um electronic sorting you know like how you sort applicants um with keywords and such do you do you have a system that does that for you before you actually get sort of the top 10 or 15 I've never worked with an organization uh that has that kind of system but I know they're definitely out there so it's very important that you pull those keywords from the job posting and use them in your resume and in your cover letter. Um, and, uh, and then it's sorted based on that. And so with your resume, um, I guess, avoid, avoid pictures, um, avoid, you know, fluffy font, um, fun paper, just keep it very simple, clean, and use those keywords. Right. I think it maybe it's the government or like the big, you know, the big engines, you know, the, um, yeah. the federal government, I think, does that with keywords and that kind of thing. So um, yeah. but good to know, because I wasn't sure like how common that was in common practice. Uh, so the smaller the businesses, then maybe the technology is not there for that or the need for it, like to sort through things. Yeah. OK, so um, so then. I did have a question. We may have answered it already, but like the best case scenario for an interview, of course, would be you've already mentioned be prepared, um, read up, um, have your material present, note take, um, which which is really good to hear because I also agree um, that they're, you know, even um, uh, bringing your resume you know, to, to help you to reflect quickly on, okay, I want to call that up so that you're not um, missing that piece where, um, yeah, because you wrote it and it's about you at the same time. Right. You, you just want to be quick, quick to the draw and you maybe you're nervous yeah. so you don't think as quickly, right? Yeah. Um, so typically then if you, you've gone through the interviews, you're done, salutation thank you very much like does that all matters right like how you introduce yourself 
how comfortable you are. So yeah. introducing who you are, really good to meet you today, that kind of thing. And then thank you so much for having me. How much does that matter? Like manners, kind of like a manners thing. Yeah, uh, I, in my opinion, that's extremely important. So like I said, if it's, if it's between you and four other people, um, every detail matters, right? So uh, be as polite as you can, um, put your best foot forward, um, show the panel that you would really fit in that organization. Ultimately, what the interview comes down to is fit. So uh, could the supervisor see working with you, um, how they're going to be looking for, how would you fit in with the rest of the team? Um, it doesn't, I guess, matter so much as do you have that extra course or did you give the best example, right? Um, yeah. do your best and, and show how you would fit into that organization. So it's like a comfortable level. So you're, you're bringing yourself to a place of comfort and respect when you yes. introduce yourself and when you also appreciate, um, you know, having an opportunity to be interviewed, it, it kind of shows, um, a gratitude or it just shows like, a maybe the way you would interact as a team, like, would this person be just cut and dry? Like, oh, oh, okay, um, bye, you know, like just cold, these yeah. sort of, so to be aware that that matters, it matters. So, yeah. so think it through if that, if you're uncomfortable with that, or if you're like in a situation like interviews, you're, you're not quite yourself, you know, like maybe you normally are like really friendly, but you're like really curt because you're nervous. Then think through how you can create a good salutation, even for like rather than written salutation, even just like, well, thank you very much, like script it. Thank you very much for for having me and for giving me an opportunity. So so it's OK to have a scripted thing. It doesn't have to be all spontaneous. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Take a few notes beforehand, work it into your practice, uh, practice with a friend. Um, get some feedback from someone else, record yourself and, and see what you pick up on. And the more you prep beforehand, the more confident you're going to feel going into that interview. That's right. right. Yeah, good advice. Yeah. Is there anything more that you might like to add that we've not sort of talked about? Um, no, I don't think so. Just, uh, I guess, want to stress again how important it is to do that pre-work, right? So, um, Test the technology, um, be early, log in five minutes early, uh, make sure everything's working, or if it's in person, you know, show up 15 minutes early, um, map out your route if you're driving, how long does it take to get there, where are you going to park, right? right. Um, you don't want to feel rushed because that could throw off your, your whole interview. So give yourself lots of time, relax, and... Also, a thank you note is always appreciated at the end as well. Just a quick email, um, I guess. Like a follow-up. Uh, a follow-up, yeah. Thanking the panel again, reiterating your interest in the role, maybe something you learned from them during the interview, and look forward to hearing back from them. Right. And how, how soon after the interview is appropriate to send an email? You know, like, say, uh, well, interview today... Should you wait a week? Or? Well, no, I would, I would send a thank you note uh, if you're interviewed in the morning, maybe send it in the afternoon. I think the same day is nice. Um, if you're wanting to follow up on the status of the competition, right. maybe a week. Yeah. Right. So, so not with a mode, an ulterior motive. When you send a thank you, just, just a thank you. And yeah, then just a thank you just a thank you. So then if you're going to reconnect with them to, again, to check on the status and to just reconnect and touch, touch point, but you can't do it so soon so that they're actually not decided yet. So they have no answer for you. Right. So, yeah. 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 And they'll usually give you a sense of next steps at the end, you know, we'll contact you by mid next week, for example. So right. if you don't right. hear anything by Thursday or Friday, then you could send that follow and contact. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, I like I like that because I think um, we're just people, right? <laughs> like it's yeah. like an organization, but it's just a function of an organization. So understanding that um, that you need to connect with the person. 
Yeah. And, and uh, I know some say, don't contact us, we'll contact you. So then I know for students, they're like uncomfortable about mm-hmm. contacting. I said, well, you know, how long has it been since you were, had your interview? And I said, like a week to two weeks. And I think it's a fair game to, to contact them and say, haven't heard from you, you know, really still really interested in the position, you know, yeah. and just open another door for a conversation. Yeah. Then it reminds the panel of you again, brings your name to the forefront. I don't think it's ever a bad thing. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Well, I think that's it. I think uh, we could talk a long time about interviews. I think we've covered an awful lot of questions and answers. So thank you so much for your expertise and all your contributions and uh, experience that you've given us uh, today. So uh, so I just uh, thank you again. And and I look forward to... uh, to more of the um, Backpack to Career conversations we're going to have. So thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks again, Nancy. Bye. You have been tuning in to an offering from the Centre for Career and Calling here at the King's University in Edmonton, Alberta. Till next time.